there's a problem we think that is happening in the guitar world, which is um, we see pentatonic boxes labeled in numbers, form one, form two, form three, form four, and form five. We also see through YouTube or books or just talking to people, uh, the cage chord shape pentatonics, C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape, and D shape. And we also see C minor shape, A minor shape, G minor shape, E minor shape, and D minor shape. And it's like, why do we have all these different tools or thought processes on the pentatonic? The answer not, will not only, excuse me, change your mind on how music works, it will show you why these exist. So with that being said, let's get down to it. Uh, I'm in my RV in the middle of Vermont. It's a little windy, so if you hear some wind, I apologize. But nonetheless, it should be a great lesson. Here we go. We're going to start with why do we hear the caged numbers? Why do teachers or or guitar players use the cage pentatonics, um, C shape, A shape, and so on. Uh, and there's two main reasons, and, and that has to do with cohesiveness in playing. When you're a fan of jam band playing, like uh, Fish, Grateful Dead, Mark Knopfler, uh, even J.J. Kale, or any sort of like jam band music where improv is, uh, is key, uh, you're gonna find the mindset is all about the caged labeling or the caged navigation of pentatonics. Why is that? Well, let's start off with one example, and we'll get to the second example. If I have something in the key of G, and it's just G, C, D, C. I think that's Brimful of Asher. I think I just played right there. I think that's the name of the song. Anyway, if I have that, and it's something that's in the key of G, and I want to quickly find different G major pentatonics. I know that the G major pentatonic is going to work because we're in the key of G, and so I can easily find any G chord I want, whether it's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one, and so on, and I can jump to those pentatonics and know with certainty that my soloing is going to sound cohesive. I have a major chord progression. Sorry, you're going to hear my dogs as well. They're jingling. Uh, I have a major chord progression, and I have my major pentatonic. It should sound great. Stay right here while I record a backing track, and we'll get that down, okay? Okay, so I have my loop done. Here's an example. I'm going to think cage pentatonics. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see this E-shaped G chord that goes with my E-shaped pentatonic. It's that simple. If you are intrigued by this, don't know this stuff, or going like, what in the heck, check out my caged primer playlist, lessons number seven and eight. It can't get any more crystal clear than this. And just, just in case you don't know this. Here we go. I'm gonna play, sorry, here's my um, E-shaped G chord. I have this pentatonic here. And then I wanna jump to my C-shaped G chord, which is right here. Then I'll jump to my G-shaped pentatonic, which is right here. And this is when using caged to jump, to navigate, to know you're uh, cohesive. This is a first example. Here we go. Now, that was uh, just a, a very like um, easy example, all right? Uh, it sounded good, didn't sound amazing, kind of trying to go fast, but you can see that it works. And so the mindset, you'll, you'll, you'll get better in a second. Uh, you can see the mindset is about being cohesive with the music. Another example is when you're trying to chase chords. If you're playing a song and the chords are moving and you want to try and change those pentatonics with the chord, G major pentatonic for the G chord, D major pentatonic for the D chord, and C major pentatonic for the C chord, the cage chord navigation is going to work 10 times better than thinking about numbers. And we will get to numbers and we will think about, we will talk about why numbers are good to know. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and stay still. Here's my C shaped G chord. So I'm going to use this pentatonic for um, the G. For the D, I have my G shaped D chord right here. So I'll use the G shaped pentatonic. And then for the C, I have right here, I have my form two. But to make it easier, I'm just going to move this down mentally and stay right there. there there's my G shaped C chord. So I have the chord progression like that. 
And now I'm going to try and solo by moving my pentatonics. It's not easy to do this when you're thinking about the number boxes. It's easier to do this when you're thinking about the uh, chord shape pentatonics. Here we go. So a very quick example, but I'm navigating surely and cohesively with those chord changes. This is a prime example of why knowing your caged chord pentatonics, by the way, which are the same as the numbers, like the number one is the G shape or the E minor shape, and the number two is the E shape and so on. They're not different shapes, it's just how we're navigating. So I just mentioned the minor, so let's talk about minors as well, so you can see this. I think, again, cohesiveness, jamming, improv, uh, this type of playing. Let's say we have a chord progression that is, um, let's see, uh, A minor to D minor. A minor to D minor. I'm going to get that loop down and I'll show you. It's the same thought process and it gives you really good results. Stay right there. Okay, so I have the loop down and now let's pick two A minor chords. Well, this is the easy one, right? The E minor shape, and that goes with my E minor shape pentatonic. Yes, it's also the form one, but I'm thinking about the chord it goes with. And for the D minor, right here, I'll think of my A minor shape. And some of you might say, well, isn't that the form four or something like that? And it's okay, but what I'm doing is I'm thinking about the chord, and with the chord comes a pentatonic instantly. Again, we're going to talk about the numbering system and why we use it and why we have it. But right now, just another example on why caged mindset works in this scenario. Here we go. So there I was just with the chords, making a melody based on moving those chord and pentatonic relationships together. Now, when do we use numbers? We see them out there. Form one, form two, form three. Again, there's only five shapes of the pentatonic. Sometimes they're labeled as numbers and sometimes they're labeled as the cage chord um, um, pentatonics. But I want to say this, some people have different numbering systems, which is totally fine. I've had several students who think of this as a form five. Now, the idea is, is that the majority of the world thinks of this as a form one, and that's fine. And if you think of this as a form five or a different form, that is totally fine because it's your system. It's your skeletal structure. It will always attach to the next shape and to the next shape. You know, so whatever works for you, keep the numbering system the way it is. I'm not, I don't think that you have to rewrite your numbering system. I teach it the way that I was taught it. And so this will always forever in my mind be a form one, but if it's not your form one, it's fine. But let me show you why you want to at least use or when the numbering system is important. All right, so when? Well, the answer is the cage stuff was about cohesiveness. The numbering system is about rock and grit and the minor third and putting, oops, sorry about that, and putting the wrong, not the wrong scale, but putting a different type of scale on top of uh, a chord progression. So we find this in the blues and rock guitar. There are many, many blues guitar players and teachers who use the box numbers. I do that when I'm teaching uh, blues and rock. And the idea is because usually blues and rock have a minor third on the progression, which rubs the major third of the chords and gives you that rock feel. Also, now follow me here, a lot of songs that are in rock and this is hard to explain, use the notes inside the pentatonic. And what do I mean by this? Well, if you look at a blues, an A blues, it's A, D, and E. And so inside this pentatonic are target notes. There's your A, there's your D, there's your E. I do like to teach the intervals. This is a one, four, and five. And so inside of these you know, box pentatonics, when you label them as numbers, you can find the one, the four, the five, the one, the four, the five, and the one. 
inside while staying inside your number box shape. And usually you stay there and you just kind of hunt the right notes down as those chord changes happen. So let me kind of give you an example. I'm gonna record a very quick blues backing track and I'll show you what I mean. So now I have this A blues, a very quick A blues loaded up on a loop. And when you're playing blues or rock, you have to understand it's all about the minor pentatonic on top of a chord progression that is not necessarily minor. The blues is major chords or seventh chords. And the pentatonic, right, is the minor pentatonic gives you this rock sound that you're so familiar with. And so when you're playing rock or blues, it is so much easier to think of the number boxes because you know they all connect and you're kind of navigating and staying close to each other and moving slowly and climbing that neck. And it's, you're not necessarily chasing the chords. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Inside this pentatonic, uh, the blues is a one, four, and five, right? So on the one, I'm gonna hit ones. One, four, five, one, four, five, one. In, uh, then comes the four. Here's a four here, here's a four here. Then there's a five. Here's a five here and a five here. When those chords come, I'm gonna stay in my form one, A minor pentatonic, and I'm gonna hit those chord tones, to emphasize the chord changes, and I'm just gonna play. I'm not thinking about caged caged uh, pentatonics. I'm thinking about box number pentatonics. Here we go. Now, all right, so as you can see, I just played the blues and I was following those intervals, the ones, fours, and fives inside my pentatonic. And when you're thinking about number pentatonics, it's a lot easier to think this way. A lot of rock and a lot of blues use the intervals in the chords, one, uh, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. You're gonna find chord progressions as power chords or even as major chords built around the, these. And it's easy to use one shape think of the number that you're on and find those intervals all right and so and we'll get to that in a second but now since i have the blues loaded i'm going to sit and i'm going to navigate through all these different pentatonic boxes and i know where my root notes are and i know when i'm in a form two and i know when i'm in a form three and you're freer this way to rock out and provide some grit because that minor third is there all right and you can find your intervals ones fours and fives and so now I'm going to move a little bit, but I'm just going to be connecting form one to form two to form three to form four. I might go to form five here. It's going to be very fast. It's going to be not as amazing as I want. Let me turn on a little bit of distortion just so we can get a better sound. And here we go. Now, there I moved through my boxes. I was really thinking about form one, form two, form three, because it was all about the scale doing the work on top of the chords. What I meant earlier is that you might find rock songs built around the chords in the pentatonic, all right? One of my lights just went out, fantastic. And so now you might find songs like, you know, and those notes, or in the A minor pentatonic. It's the one, it's the four, it's the flat seven. So you're gonna pick your A minor pentatonic and hit those notes. One. And I'm thinking about the intervals inside the pentatonic. I'm just running my mouth at this point. Here's the deal. Sorry I'm looking this way, the, the window. It's gorgeous, I'm in Vermont, it's awesome. When you're thinking about cohesive improvisation, major and minor, moving with the chords, improvising, jamming, the cage chord mindset will help navigate and bond you to the music 10 times better than when you're using the number system. When you're in the blues or the rock, 
the number system will put you in charge of soloing, soloing with the grit and the movement that you need. You'll be able to find your intervals inside those pentatonic boxes. You'll be able to rub that minor third against the major third of the chords really well. Uh, check out my uh, blues primer playlist, my pentatonic mastery playlist, my cage primer playlist. If any of this stuff intrigues you, all the answers in great detail are in there. With that being said, thank you so much for being here. See you on another episode of Stitch Method on the road.